morning, everyone, and welcome uh, to Holy Redeemer, Our Lady Perpetual Help, St. Michael's, and Our Lady of the Lake University as we gather this day to celebrate the second Sunday of Advent in COVID time. As we begin this morning, I would encourage you to use your liturgical aid that was uh, downloaded on our Facebook pages. That would be Our Lady Perpetual Help, St. Michael's, Holy Redeemer, or Kevin Faust. Check those pages and uh, I follow along. One of the reasons why you might want to do that is because uh, we are doing new mass parts for the Advent season. So you might have been thrown off just a little bit last week, but those mass parts are on the liturgical aid that we have posted. So I would encourage you to follow along and to participate in whatever way you can. Get up out of bed, put your coffee down, stand up, sit down, kneel. Uh, whatever you need to do to praise the Lord this morning. So welcome to everyone. We're glad that you are with us. And I invite you now to join me in saying the prayer to end the coronavirus pandemic. Gracious God, protector of the defenseless, look with compassion on your people who are suffering from the dangers of this global pandemic. Be compassionate to us. Show us your infinite mercy and guide the hands of those who are attempting to overcome the situation. Instill within us a spirit of generosity so that we might know how to assist those who are the weakest, the elderly, the homeless, and the impoverished, those who bear the brunt of this crisis. Let us approach these individuals and assist them in these difficult times. Protect the doctors, nurses, and all healthcare professionals who are on the front lines of this pandemic. Enlighten their minds so that they might find a cure. We ask all of this through the intercession of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, the protector of those in need. Amen. Together we implore the protection of our Blessed Mother as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal, good morning and welcome.
who set out in haste to meet your son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Peter. Do 
Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of person ought you to be? Conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him, at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Facelift, 
liposuction, tummy tuck, a couple of other things. And she even decides that she's going to change her hair to platinum blonde. So as a new woman, she proudly sashays out of the hospital and is struck and killed by a speeding ambulance at the entrance. <laughs> At the pearly gate, she confronts God and says, I thought you said I had another 30 to 40 years. He said I did, but I didn't recognize you. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the people that John was proclaiming the message to did not fully recognize him. Was he the Messiah? Who was he? Who was he? And as they're going out and they're listening to him, we probably are more struck by the whole thing of camel's hair and locusts and wild honey. But that's okay. Camel hair, I guess, gets to feeling okay after a while if you wear it long enough. And of course, traditional symbols of judgment and comfort are his food. Locusts regarded as God's agent of punishing destruction and honey signifies peace and plenty, God's blessings. Which is about what John is preaching, ultimately. He is announcing the dual message of the gospel, which would bring both judgment and comfort. He's proclaiming the word. There's two things I would ask us to sort of focus on today in this gospel. One is the desert, and the other is humility. Imagine what that must have been like for John. You have all these people, it says all these people were coming out. He had a great following. He had a great following. They weren't quite sure exactly who he was, but he had a following. And imagine that you have to announce to all of them, my cousin is coming and he's greater than me. How many of us want to say that to other people? We don't. We want to think, wait a minute, I, I got my thing together. I've got it. I'm the greatest thing since life's bread. It's about me. And what John is saying is it's about he. It's not about me. I'm preaching a baptism of repentance of sin. He will come and baptize you into the Lord and into the mission of what that is about. That had to be difficult for John. Very difficult. But yet John knew what his mission was, to proclaim the message. And the message was that the kingdom of God will be made real in Jesus Christ. He doesn't say that in so many words, but that's what it's about. And the one coming after me is greater than me. Brothers and sisters, John does this in the desert. John does this in the desert place that, uh, if you've ever been to the Holy Land, pretty desolate, pretty tan color all over the place. But even in the desert, brothers and sisters, hot days and cold nights, there's a beautiful horizon and the beauty of the open sky and the occasional sound of uh, some sort of insect buzzing the finding of that stream in the desert or the, the blooming of some sort of flower in the midst of desolation. This is where John is conducting his mission. We too, brothers and sisters, have deserts in our lives. Addiction, jealousy, envy, COVID, I think COVID is like a desert. 
And I think it's like Advent also, waiting to get out of this, waiting to move on, waiting for life. We too have deserts in our lives, the frustration of marital difficulties, maybe difficulties with our children, maybe job insecurity or loss of job. We too have deserts in our lives. And we long for what is to come. New life, the beauty of the sunrise, flowing water. We need to remember that as John is proclaiming the message that God has already delivered us in his son, Jesus Christ. And that in the Son, Jesus Christ, and through Jesus Christ, that gospel through our baptism has been imprinted on our hearts. The challenge, brothers and sisters, as we are in this desert, is to allow the kingdom to be made real by us and through us. It says in the second reading, it says in the second reading, what kind of people are you to be? What kind of people are you to be? And then it goes on and says, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for the hastening and hastening the coming of the day of God. Of course, this is looking for the second coming. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or, spot or blemish before him at peace. As we are in our desert, we should long to be that kind of people. We should strive to be that kind of people. We should live to be that kind of people. And in doing so, making the kingdom of God real in our midst. The gospel has been imprinted on our hearts. And the gospel of Jesus Christ says, Feed the hungry, clothe the naked, comfort the afflicted. And we will experience the new life, the flowing water, the blooming flowers. The kingdom is real and in our midst. That, I think, is the challenge of the message of John the Baptist. Because the gospel, brothers and sisters, is about judgment and comfort. And if we live and follow the Gospels, we will experience the comfort of the presence and the life of Jesus Christ, which is within. But if we continue to ignore, we continue to pretend, if we continue to act like the Word is only about comfort, we are sorely mistaken. The Gospel calls us, brothers and sisters, to the kind of people we are to be. We wait for the Lord, and yet the Lord is with us. And we have the ability to make the kingdom real in our midst. May straight the highway. Prepare yourselves for the coming of the Lord.
came forth the gospel of the Lord to our brothers and sisters who are seeking to gain admittance into our church. May they come to know the comfort, <coughs> the comfort of God who brings life and peace. Let us stand and make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God and from true God, begotten and not made, God substantial with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and in any manner. For our saint, he was crucified under conscious life. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in the course of the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no way. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. John the Baptist prepared the way of the Lord as a great messenger. As baptized disciples in the Lord, we too are his messengers on behalf of those who suffer and are burdened. Let us bring their needs, along with the needs of our faith communities, to gather here to our Lord. For Christians during this Advent season, that we turn from the wastelands of violence, deceit, and greed, and dedicate ourselves to promoting faithful, honest, and loving relationships. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing in our civic community, that God will lead us to honest dialogue, greater respect for one another, and a deeper commitment to the truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who lack freedom or feel entrapped by life, particularly those with addictions in abusive situations or with lack of employment, that they may experience hope and new freedom through God's presence and love. We pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who are waiting, that God will give us patience. Help us to accompany one another through these difficult times and open us to quiet reflection that will help us recognize God's presence and invitation to service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who are sick, particularly those with COVID-19, that God will ease their pain, heal them, and restore them to their communities of family and friends. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that the Good Shepherd will gather them into the peace and joy of God's presence forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers that were submitted online throughout the week, for the prayers written here in the Book of Intentions, and offered in the live stream online, and for the prayers that we now make in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. Almighty God, you sent John the Baptist into the world to prepare the way for your Son. May the testimony of the Baptist's preaching and the example of his life continue to draw the world into the mystery of your kingdom. Open our hearts to your wonders, and hear the prayers we bring to you this day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands and the prayer of your Lord Jesus. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and ever to give thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming. The loneliness of human flesh has so fulfilled the design and form long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, the thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing to him of your glory as without end we acclaim.
At the same as the man, informed by my teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Let us join with our brothers and sisters who are in their homes, joining us live stream, who cannot receive communion, but can receive spiritually. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed of sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you with all my heart. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are ready in my heart, and unite myself to you completely. Please do not let me ever be separated from you. Amen.
Thank you, everyone, for joining us today, especially those of you who are joining us for the first time. Is there anyone here today who is a visitor, who is visiting us? Please stand if you're a visitor. Tell us your name, who you are, and where you are from. Um, Tim Norris. Um, I'm from Louisiana. Okay. What part of Louisiana? Alexandria. Alexandria? North. North. Central. Yeah, Central? Okay. It's Louisiana, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. <laughs> Wait, there's somebody else? I don't care yet. I'm uh, David Coffin. I uh, have lived here more than half my life. And uh, I have to be here. He's originally from? St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri, everybody. <laughs> He's a good person. He's a good person. <laughs> you are welcome, welcome in the name of the Lord. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. celebrating their 16 years of marriage on December the 10th. Happy anniversary. Oh, wait a minute. Is anybody here celebrating their anniversary? Happy anniversary to y'all. Happy anniversary to y'all. Happy anniversary to all y'all. Happy anniversary to y'all. Can you trim this grass up for me? It's done. Now sometimes it goes a little bit too far when he cuts my bougainvilleas back too much and the blooms get cut off. So maybe I have to give him instructions on that. Anybody celebrating a birthday this week? Any birthdays? Anybody here celebrating a birthday? Okay, we do have a couple of birthdays. December 8th, Lorraine Laos turns three years old and Gerald Spaulding turns 67. December 10th, Teresa Leoyos turns 72. Happy birthday to y'all. Happy birthday to y'all. Happy birthday to all y'all. Happy birthday to y'all and many more. Happy birthday, everyone. Don't forget to send your birthdays in to us and we will make sure that we. Thanks to everyone who joined us today from live, live stream. We're always happy that you're with us. We're happy that Jose is with us too. Still pulling in. I'm still looking for a uh, gospel musician for our parish. If anyone knows of somebody who is looking or interested or would like to leave their congregation where they're currently playing and join our <laughs> congregation, I'd be happy to help you. Okay? All spare in love and war and liturgy. Okay? So, if you know anybody, send them my way. Um, I invite you today to take part in the second collection, which is the Retirement Fund for Religious. Uh, your collection helps hundreds of religious communities who do not have enough retirement savings and struggle to provide for their aging members. I encourage you to be generous. I'm not sure you had sisters and we all had priests in our parishes, probably religious, uh, religious communities, and they ask for support. Um, before I get this out of my mind, next week is the third Sunday of Advent. So everyone who's coming to church, please wear pink and Holy Redeemer, St. Michael, and our, uh, Holy, our Lady of Petrol Health. Petrol Health. <laughs> wear pink to church. I know it's probably a fashion faux pas, but that's okay. We're, we can do whatever we want. It's Advent, and we're not following any fashion guidelines. And so um, if John can wear camel hair, we can wear pink. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Um, we invite you to participate in our angel tree for Holy Redeemer, St. Michael's, and our Lady Perpetual Hall. Due to COVID, we're doing this as contactless as possible. Uh, we're asking uh, to either donate, uh, you can go online and, and do this, or to bring us gift cards of $25 or higher. Uh, we currently have about 40% of our angels covered. We have over 100 angels this year. And so um, you can drop the gift cards off at any of the three parishes or next weekend's masses. We're needing to move quickly so that we can get those gift cards to the parents so that they can go out and go shopping for their children. This Tuesday, December 8th, the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. 
It is the patronal, patronal feast day of our country and is a holy day of obligation. Uh, we celebrate live stream mass at 9 a.m. at Our Lady Perpetual Help at 6 o'clock p.m. in Spanish at St. Michael's. Please try to join us. This Wednesday, December 9th, uh, Holy Redeemer will be hosting a, a parish mission of sorts for our three parishes entitled Ready the Way of the Lord, Embracing Advent to Prepare for Christmas. We invite you to join us and to learn about the Advent season as we explore ways to live out the spirit of the season and prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord this Christmas. This year due to COVID, in addition to offering the mission in person at Holy Redeemer, you're welcome to come if you would like to. Uh, we will be live streaming it on all three parishes' Facebook pages and on my own personal Facebook page. So please join us. It's, it's just another, we have that, another Wednesday, we have scripture study going on on Thursday. How many people do you have in scripture study, Harold? About 20, so that's great. We're really happy. The, this Saturday is the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. I'll be celebrating 9 o'clock a.m. Mass at St. Michael's. Due to COVID restrictions, this Mass is invitation only for the Guadalupanas of St. Michael and Our Lady of Perpetual Help. The Mass will be live streamed for all of our parishioners. Please mark your calendars and try to join us. Our Christmas schedule, please consult the bulletins and please consult uh, the online um, e-messages that are being sent out. If you are not getting your e-message every week, that means I do not have an accurate email address for you. So I need your email addresses if you're not getting the e-news every week. There's something in it every week. Uh, 12 noon will be here, live stream. 12 noon, Christmas Eve. 3 o'clock p.m. at Holy Redeemer. 4 o'clock at St. Michael's. 5 o'clock at Our Lady Perpetual Help on Christmas Day, 10 o'clock at Our Lady Perpetual Help. There will be no Midnight Mass for this year. Offering envelopes are available in all three parishes for 2021. Please pick them up. Mass intention books are available in all three parishes. Please come to the office. Um, also, there are envelopes where you can send in donations for Christmas flowers if you like. And we're grateful for everyone in religious education, kids, do your assignments, get your papers turned in. Teachers, get your assignments out. We're grateful to everyone who has sent in their contributions to the parish. You're keeping us going in all three parishes. You can use Gift Central. Thank you to all who supported the Archbishop's appeal. We made our goal in all three parishes. Thank you to all who submitted prayer intentions over this week. I lift them up in my prayers every morning, every evening, and at daily mass. And at this time, I'm going to ask two of the guests, the two guests who stood up, to come forward. There were Tim and David. Tim and David, and I can't remember the name of the other guy, came to me about a month ago talking to me about this exercise program for men. Of course, I was interested, as you can tell. And um, come on over, and they're, they're going to talk a little bit about this exercise program for men that has a spiritual component to it that they're going to be starting here on the east side at Pittman Sullivan Park. So I was happy that they reached out to me and uh, it's available for any male in all three parishes. And they're going to explain a little bit more about it. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Tim Norris. Uh, one of my, my friends, David Kaufman. We're part of a peer leg group, here, a workout group called F3. That's a fitness fellowship. Uh, our mission is to plant and grow and serve small men workout groups configuration of the male community in We work out at 5.30 in the morning, weekdays, and 7 a.m. on Saturdays. It's free of charge, held outdoors, rain or shine. We have various locations in and around San Antonio, and workouts are available six days a week. And we're adding a new location just down the street. On Monday, January 4th at 5.30, we're starting to work out at Pitney Southern Park. Um, all fitness levels are welcome, no matter where you're at, come work out. We'll meet the parking lot uh, just before 530 and do a 45 minute workout. We'll invite you to join us. And between now and then, we'd love for you to join us at 7 a.m. on Saturdays at the Almost Basin Soccer Fields, Almost Park Basin Soccer Fields. Uh, it's a chance to meet some of the guys and get started with the workout routine. For more, for more information, uh, you can email me at tnorris. LA-HQ.com. Uh, we'd love for you to come work out with us at 57th Park. 
Uh, for more information, again, it's January 4th, 530. We hope to join us. We'll be hanging out in the vestibule after mass if anybody wants to ask more questions about F3. Thank you. No, no problem. Yeah. Now, the reason this is important to say is because, you know, I thought they were coming to me to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not, that's not in the cards. But I am going to be there. I'm going to be there because the thing that they reminded me or told me that I thought was very consoling and comforting to someone with my girth and <laughs> someone with my age um, is that it's exercise levels. You know, they don't kick you out of the group. You work at your pace and your level. I mean, you have to follow along, but I mean, it's, it, you know, they don't kick you out, you know. And so that's the last thing. <laughs> that's important. I mean, that would be pretty embarrassing, you know, to join a group and then you get kicked out because you get kicked out of the guys. But, but the three, F3. Fitness. Fitness, Fitness fellowship, fellowship, and faith. faith. So, invite you to come. You don't have to be Catholic. Uh, we invite you to come. It is male only. Uh, the ladies have to form their own. <laughs> so, anyway, I appreciate them reaching out to me to bring this to the east side, because so often programs like this take place on the north side, but they don't ever take place on the east side. And they were very interested in coming to the east side. So I encourage any of our men in our three parishes who might be interested, at the Sullivan Park, January 4th, 5.30 a.m. Yes. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. And finally, COVID, brothers and sisters. COVID, COVID, COVID. Wash your hands. Wear your mask. Socially distance yourselves. If you have not been tested, uh, it's very easy to get tested right up here at Pitt and Sullivan Park next to the uh, tennis courts. You can go on your phone and register online to get an appointment. I believe they're there on Sundays even. I think last Sunday they were there. And so, uh, or you can walk up, hold your phone in front of the, the little, what are they called? QR codes. QR, QR codes. codes. And it comes up and you can register. It's the swab. One side, one side, gums, tongue, roof of the mouth. It's not nasal. And you do it yourself, you swab yourself. It's very easy to take your identification with you. And uh, I, I literally went yesterday because I had flown home to see my mother. And so I went yesterday. And literally there was one person in front of me. You get your results in two days. They text it to you or email it to you. They, they text and email to you. So I really encourage you, over at Lady the Lake University, across from the convent, on the parking lot, they do the same thing. And it is simple, and it is fast, and I encourage you to find out what your status is in terms of whether you've been exposed or not been exposed. And uh, it's very easy and painless. So please, be careful. Let's, uh, let's end the coronavirus by being uh, responsible. Also, the Archbishop has made a statement on taking the, the, the vaccine, his comments on that. So uh, please be careful and distance yourself and do the things you need to do. Bye. Love you.